All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. And today our topic is about the Trinity. But, you know, we will not do what usually people do, you know, like, okay, uh, what the Trinity is true, what the Trinity is, you know. We will not do this way. <clears throat> the purpose of the videos we make is to try to understand, and before we answer somebody, we have to understand that person. What people usually do, they answer without even understanding. They are just defending the idea, but they are not listening to the reasoning. Now, everybody have his own way to uh, imagine Jesus. Some, they make a statues for him, which is not really uh, biblical. Uh, <clears throat> the Bible says, make no image for anything what is on earth or up in heaven. So that means include everybody. However, human being always, he like, uh, he like to see images of somebody he loves. Muslims, they have their own image of uh, Jesus. And they don't even call him Jesus. They have a strange, weird name, Isa. And not even a single Muslim knows what Isa means. <laughs> if we try to do some reasoning with the Muslims about who is Isa and what Isa present, you will find the Quran. He gave us a few lines about Isa. I mean, the Quran is so cheap when it's come to this Isa. If we ask the Muslims, okay, how much Allah he spoke about Isa? You will find that Allah he spoke about Sulaiman and his ant, Sulaiman and his birds, Sulaiman and his genie, way more than he spoke about Isa. As an example, where in the Quran we can see the crucifixion of Isa? It's just one statement, that's it. And it's it's making it even more confusing. So when it's come to Christianity, the Quran is a very cheap book. Showing us that the one, the author of the book, he did that in purpose. He don't want to go in details because either he have a lack of details and understanding or he is afraid because of his lack. If he speak more, he will make more mistakes. It's like saying, I am. I can claim to be an eye doctor. And as long nobody asks me questions, and as long I don't speak about what I learned, uh, nobody would know that really I'm lying. So I can say I am an eye. The lack of details and understanding. But I am not an eye doctor. <clears throat> so let us see today how and why the Muslims, they say and they reject. If we go in the Quran, we will find some verses speaking about Jesus. Chapter 5, verse 116. And when Allah says, O oh, Isa, not Jesus, whenever you see the word uh, Isa, uh, Jesus in the Quran, that is not true. That is a false translation. Because you Muslim, you should not translate a name. If it is saying, uh, you know, like the word Jesus, there is a reason for it to be written Jesus, as otherwise it is Yeshua. So because there is no equal uh, letters in, in certain language, they do that. But in your language, it is Isa. You can type the word Isa, as usual, so many Muslims, they do. So Isa, son of Mary, <coughs> Allah will say to him, Did you say to your followers to worship me and my mother beside Allah? Here we find Muhammad claiming that the Christian believe in the following trinity, Isa, Maryam, and Allah. And this is why, and this is explained why Muhammad, he did not speak much about Christianity. First, he do not know what Christianity is about, because there is not a single Christian believe that Mary is part of the trinity. Mary is a human being like everybody. She's chosen by God, yes. She delivered, uh, she gave birth to Jesus, yes. But she is not part of the Trinity. So when the Quran say <clears throat> that Allah in the judgment day, because in different verses it says Allah will ask Jesus the same question in the judgment day. Let us see. The other verses. <clears throat> In 
in chapter 4 verse number 71 it says the same that Christian you should not say there's Trinity don't say there are three but one don't say that but you see the Quran as any book you have to connect the dots so what is the tree the three uh, uh, person the Quran is speaking about it is Mary it is Isa it is Allah Going back to the previous verse. When Allah is going to say this to Isa, according to the Islamic understanding, that Allah will say that to Isa in the judgment day. This is in the future. Allah will say to Isa, did you say to your people to worship me and my mother beside Allah? What does that mean? That's mean the Trinity which Muhammad is speaking about is the Trinity will stay until the judgment day. Do you, under, <clears throat> do you understand me, guys? <clears throat> do you understand what I'm saying? The Trinity which Muhammad claimed that the Christians has as Mary, Jesus, Allah is going to be the Trinity until the judgment day. This is the Trinity they have and there is no other Trinity. This is alone proof Islam to be false religion. If you don't believe me, you can go right now and open the interpretation for this verse. You will see that this is about the judgment day. Allah will ask Jesus. Did you say that? And this is why he says, Isa, he says to him, well, if you want to punish them, it's up to you. If they punish them, Lu, they are the slave. And this has been said, and the verse here confirmed that this is in the judgment day. Allah says, this is the day in which they are truthful. That, you know, like this is the day when the, the good ones, the, the truthful, they will go to heaven. So this is about the judgment day, no question. So the Quran confirmed that there is a trinity which is believed by the Christians is going to be the trinity. And this is the only trinity because remember, the Quran never spoke about other trinity. But this is mean Allah is a false God for he predict that there is a Trinity is going to stay in the judgment day and that a Trinity is Mary Isa and Allah <coughs> in Arabic it's in the front of you I mean you need me to put it for you in Arabic read it وَإِذَا قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّي إِلَهِينِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ مَا يَكُونَ لِي etc so you know the Arabic is so clear even more clearer and this is why you see here Jesus saying you want to punish them punish them it's up to you they are your slaves and then then Allah he says this is the day when the, the, the truthful one they will enjoy heaven with gardens and rivers so this page alone is enough to prove to us many things. Whoever the one who wrote the Quran, he have no idea what Christianity is about. Again, this is chapter 5, verse 116. Chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 116. Focus with me, guys. Focus. Chapter 5. Verse number 116, 117, 118, 119. And here we need to ask ourselves a question. As long as the Muslims, they have a logic, and the logic is how Jesus became your God. Shouldn't they ask Allah how Allah think that Mary is part of the Trinity? How even Allah think that he is part of the Trinity because not a single Christian believe in Allah as part of the Trinity. The Muslim, they will say to you, the Arab Christian, they use the word Allah, but this is because they are under the occupation for 400 years. For us, we go by names or titles written about God, which is in the Bible. We cannot find Allah in the Bible anywhere. If you say to me, this is in translation, well, this is why it's called translation. A second ago, I said to you, not a single place in the, in the Quran, it says Jesus. 
This is not true. The same goes for the translation. Any translator, he put the word Allah in Arabic Bible, he is a false translation. Here we go. This is the Quran says, Qala Isa ibn Maryam. Isa said, the son of Mary, Isa, there's no Jesus. So this is a false translation when you say Jesus. It's kind of deception actually. Whoever, whoever in, in, the, in his uh, translation changed the name, he is a deceiver. Or he is ignorant. So here we notice that the author of the Quran, he have no idea, and he think what he think about the Trinity. And not only that, he claiming that the Trinity, which is Mary, Isa, and Allah, is the one who will stay and sustain itself until it is the, the judgment day. Now, where is the where is the where is the Christian believer who believe until the judgment day that Mary is part of the Trinity? We cannot find them. So this is a false prophecy. If somebody want to say to me, oh, in the time of Muhammad, there is a group of people believe that Mary is part of the Trinity. Let us assume that this was true, which I cannot I cannot support it in any way, any mean. There is there is some people who until now, they, they think highly of Mary, and why not? We think highly of her always. I mean, God, he chose her to give birth to the Messiah. But there is no Christian sect believe in such a thing. But let us say for the sake of argument that there was a cult like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormon, you know, there's many of them, believe that Mary, she was part of the Trinity somehow, some, somewhere. But that would not give an excuse to the God of Islam to consider Christianity is this Trinity. Because that's mean that Allah do not know that the major number of a Christianity, which is let us say nine 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 point nine 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 believe in different Trinity. So Allah, if you want to refute the Christian, he should mention what the majority believe, not the minority, if those minority are exist. Especially the verses are so clear that this is about the judgment day, which means this cult which is saying supposedly Mary is God. They should be exist until the judgment day where we can find them. Neither the Protestant, neither the Catholic, neither the Orthodox believe that Mary is God. So here we see Allah, he says that Isa is not, but he don't tell us why. This is number one. Allah, Allah he's saying that Isa is not God, but why he don't tell. In different verse we will see why Mary is not God but in this chapter here it doesn't say why in different verse we will see why imagine the logic of the Quran how Allah when to prove to us that Isa and his mother they don't they are not God right Read the work of uh, San John who wrote the words about the expensive views. Okay, my friend, for me, I go what the Bible says, and everybody can, you know, it's up to you. I don't follow San John, I follow God. With my respect to the name you mentioned, I love him too. But this is philosophy. God said it clearly, make no image for what is up in heaven or what down in earth, and there are your feet. So the word is so clear. Now you can make your own philosophy and you can say and you can convince people by your own ideas. No problem. But I follow God. I don't follow saint. If somebody is saint and he says something is not does not agree with God teaching. I follow God teaching not a saint. Even he is a wonderful person and he don't mean to say something not true, but I'm not convinced. We go back to our topic. The Messiah son of Mary was no no other than messenger okay like all the messenger who passed before him but okay how this anyone notice what is this the, the wrong statement here who noticed what is wrong in this statement anyone notice there is something very very and an smart anyone can tell me what is any smart in this sentence <clears throat> 
by the way most of people do not know we are doing live broadcast in here so please tell your friends because we are doing it in this place uh, can I call you to debate about use the icon no my friend Habib Ibrahim I don't debate the Christians go and use icons as you want and kiss them if you wish for me I believe this is silly and not only silly it is stupid do your business Nowhere Jesus says make an icon for me as simple as that if you follow Jesus you follow Jesus as simple as that now what is the stupid thing in this phrase in front of us anyone Jesus is not like other messengers in which way in which way well here is saying he is the same not like he's saying he is the same as other messengers who pass away before him but Jesus did not pass away you see if Allah is telling us about the Messiah if we ask any Muslim is the Messiah uh, Habib Ibrahim, you are not welcome in my channel, my friend. You are just an arrogant idiot. Get out. Do Jesus need to say to you, don't do that? Because he said that in the Bible already, in the Old Testament, you idiot. Who is the one who says, make no images for me, for what is in heaven, or for what is in heaven, or down in earth? Is that God? Is that Jesus or somebody else? Get out of here. You are just an immature kid. This is in the Bible. This is God speaking. Make no images. Where Jesus said though? So are you saying the God of the Old Testament is not the same the God of the New Testament? This is how immature you are. <laughs> Show me what Jesus said so. <laughs> I have no time for kids, my friend. If you are a kid, you know, some people, they are so much attached to their sect, not to God. And that's how naive they are. They, wanna, they don't want even to use their brain. Go kiss pictures, go kiss images. This is all is not from God. Have nothing to do with God. I can accept images or etc. As, a, as, a, as an art or documentary to document a story. But not to put them in a church and uh, you know uh, kiss them. That is silly. But still, for me, those who do that, they are committing sin against God. But they are Christians, and I do commit sin too. So I'm not better. So I'm not condemning you, but I'm saying this is wrong. And in the top of that, those who do those things, they are doing it because they love God, not because they are bad people. So we have to put that in their, into consideration. You know, if they have an image of an icon, uh, not because they are bad people, no, actually the opposite, because they are good people, but they got the Bible wrong. And if God, he forgive me for bigger stuff, I mean, he will not forgive me for having an image, uh, which he told me not to do because I love him, I think. The answer is uh, easy to know but still this is not an excuse to say uh, uh, you know uh, show me where Jesus says that <clears throat> and if we go in the Bible for those who claim Jesus did not say that or God did not say that is that in the Bible or I'm making things up this is your Bible read any translation you wish you must not make of yourself an idol or any kind or any image of anything in the heaven or in earth or in the sea. It's so clear. And those are images. It doesn't matter they are images of who, because you see, even what is in heaven, which means even me. I am in heaven. God saying. Nothing in what in earth, nothing what is in the heaven, nothing what is even in the sea. What do you what more you want to explain?
How clear we can make it more? And you say, where do where God says that? But you see, this is the idea we are talking about. Some Christians, they are the same as Muslims. They see only verses they like to see. You know what I mean? There is some Christians, they act like Muslims. Uh, like as an example, I said, God, he said, uh, once we were like talking in a church about uh, having guns. Uh, you know, always I carry a gun with me. So they said to me, is it a Christian behave to have a uh, gun? I said, isn't it Jesus says go, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one? They said, where it says that? They never heard of it. <laughs> you know, when they want, they don't hear what Jesus said. When they want, they knew what Jesus said. What do you mean you do not know? You never heard of it? You say, well, where? How, where? Jesus says that? Oh, yes, Jesus says that. Peter was carrying a sword. Is it him who cut the ear of the soldier? What he was doing with the sword? He was doing his nails? Or maybe he was cutting uh, uh, zucchini and uh, cucumber. At that time, you have to protect yourself. They go between cities. There is bandit. There is pirates. You know, in the sea, there is there is pirate of the, the the ground, and there is pirate of the sea. Thieves, criminals everywhere. Now, <clears throat> somebody saying, "Why you don't show us the verse where it says, I do not know the hour?'" My friend, the, this is your ignorance because Jesus, in the same chapter, he said clearly that. My father and I, we know the hour. When Jesus says, nobody knows but my father, for this is, is a decision is going to be taken by him when he go back to heaven. And now he is humble as a human being. In the same time, it is us who will make the decision when the judgment day will come. Because Jesus said, when those things happen, the judgment day will come and I will come. So we in the Christianity, we don't believe in preset date for judgment day. You Muslims, you believe in destiny and faith. We don't believe in that. So because if you're ignorant, you think Jesus said, <clears throat> nobody knows and that's it and I have nothing to do with it. But as you see in the same chapter saying that Jesus is the one who will come back and he is the judge in the judgment day. And yet you are saying to me how Jesus can be God, but yet he is not knowing when the judgment day. While Jesus says to you, when this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened, then I will come. And I will judge all mankind. However, Mr. What's your name? The the Muslim guy. Uh, I will open my sky for you if you like to call me, because I will show you too that your God do not know the judgment day date. You see, I said many times if a Muslim he use his logic. The logic, the same logic he fight us with. He will find himself in a big, big, big trouble. So the Muslim who says to me, why you don't show us the verse saying, Jesus saying the following. Why I want to show you only the verse, what I show you the chapter and you will read it. And I will show you the Quran chapter and you read it. And let people laugh. How God of Islam do not know. While Jesus, he knew. Are you willing to do so? <clears throat> Where is the Muslim guy? The one is saying, Do, can you show us? Are you willing to call me my friend live on air right now? Hello? The one who is asking me to show him, are you willing to call me live on air and let everybody judge? Be the hero. Suddenly now he is taking a nap and he is not moving. All right, we go back to the topic. <clears throat> so here, the one who wrote the Quran, he got himself busted because that's mean. Jesus is the same as all the messengers who pass away. He passed away too. How he can be God? This is the logic, correct? This is what the verse is saying. I'm not making things up. And this is the Muslim translation. 
But isn't it the Muslim they say to us that Jesus did not die? It will then yell you are not a Muslim then go and uh, you know worship a zucchini Because if you are a truthful person you will read the whole chapter not a verse Only stupid people they read only a verse here we go. You see I am here when a Muslim he says to me Well, I want to prove you wrong. He is more than welcome to read for me the whole chapter to prove me wrong So I'm not quoting a verse We are willing to read 100 verses before this and 100 verses after this Yet the Muslim cannot refute me. But what you people do, doesn't matter who you are, atheists, Muslims, etc. You take a verse and you say, I'm going to build a story in that verse. It doesn't work this way. This is a book. This is not a verse. Jesus did not make a phone call and he make one statement and he's gone. So, in order to learn who is Jesus, we have to prove in everything he said together. And this is the same for Islam. This is why we are saying this is a contradiction. Because according to Islam, Jesus was left up to heaven. Correct? The Quran says, Wa inni rafi'uka ilayya. <clears throat> The Muslim they say that Jesus never died in the cross. Not a single Muslim he dare to say that this is not a true. According to Muslims, Jesus never died. But look, in different verse in the Quran it says, and remember when Allah said, which is very funny, how Allah he said, is that in the past or in the future? Suppose this is in the past. But in Arabic, uh, it says, إِذَا قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا إِيسَ إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيْهِ uh, Husni, uh, Husseini, you have to give me, you have to prove to me I'm taking it out of context. Actually, I'm, I'm giving you your Islamic understanding, not mine. <laughs> Look at the drama of the Muslims. They are so upset. Why you don't call me and give me the context of it? Just right now, my friend. We can open Ibn Kathir, we can open Al-Qurtubi, we can open a Jalalain, and everybody will laugh at you. So, Isa, he said to him, I'm going to cause you to die. And by the way, look at the Muslims' translation. Where is Mutawafika? It's gone. Look, it says here, I'm gathering thee. Why Jesus was like broken pieces and he put him in a glue? What do you mean gathering thee? Where in the Arabic it says gathering thee? Maybe this Isa, he have an accident. And his foot was in a place and his head was in a place and his arm was in a place and Allah is going to gather him The translation have nothing to do with the Arabic words if we change the translation you will find the following hmm. This is big tal. I will use different Muhammadan translation Muhammad uh, uh, Hilali Khan All right, I remember when Allah said oh Isa I will take you or raise you to myself. But this is not a true. It's, it's not what it says only. It says, Inni mutawafika. Inni mutawafika. Mutawafika means causing your death. Uh, show me Shia Tafsir, please. Uh, okay. So if I show, you know, I will show you Shia Tafsir if you call me. I want to have the honor of you calling me once in your lifetime. Do you have the, the the bravery of just making a call? I'm not asking you to come to my house. And I will show you the Shia Tafsir and you will die laughing. What do you say? Yeah, he's a Shia. He believed that uh, Ali ibn Al Talib, he was in two places. He was in India and he was in China and he was in Mecca in the same time. And he believed that if you wear a black shoe, your private part will not work. If you wear a yellow shoe, your private part will be a part will be like point, very powerful, right? He is a Shia who believe if you have sex with your wife from the back, your son will turn to be mute, and he will have cross eyes. Hmm. So we go back to that topic. Like the funny, the most, they say to me, "Show me." If I show you, you will die laughing at yourself, and this is why you don't call me. Show me. 
Now, all those translations are absolutely false because here there is a word, it's called mutawafika. Mutawafika, it's mean causing your death. Change the translation. You see, I'm going to change translation one by one just to see maybe we can find one is truthful. Maybe, I don't, you never know. Ahmad Raza Khan, Mr. Raza Khan, this is a guy from Pakistan. All right. Look at this. Look at this. I will keep you alive till full age. What does that mean? <laughs> you see, they are trying to go around the world causing your death. You notice that the whole the previous translators they did not say I will keep you alive. The word alive does not exist, the word full age does not exist. I mean, what those are doing? This is the Islamic confusion. They don't know what to say about this verse because it says he will cause your death. And then I will take you up to heaven. This is a chapter three, verse number fifty-five. Always before I open the verse, I I point this the the the, the mouse at the, the number my friend so focus with me always before i open a verse you see it in the screen the chapter name the verse number focus focus wake up drink some coffee so the verse in arabic says inni mutawafika i am going to make you die and then i will take you up to heaven now as long as the muslim they say don't take things out of context if we compare this verse to the other verse Uh, where it says <clears throat> the Messiah the son of Mary was no other than messenger messenger like whom he had passed away before him no well, this is in total agreement in which way here the verse in front of us saying that Jesus he passed away in the same time Allah he wanted to prove to us that Jesus and Mary are not God. What is the proof? First of all, we don't believe in Mary as God anyway, so there's, not need, there's no need to prove to us such a thing. That the proof is Allah, He have Jesus, He eat food. What? Jesus, He eat food. Christians, is it true that Jesus he did fast for 40 days? Is that true? 40 days, no food at all. Not like fast like Ramadan. You sleep, you sleep most of the day, and then you wake up at night, you eat all night, and you became so fat like, like an elephant, which is not fasting at all. Actually, they gain weight in the month of Ramadan. Jesus the Messiah, he fasted for 40 days. So how come? Your excuse is Jesus cannot be God for he ate food. What about the one who ate food? He can stay without food for 40 days. Is that a human act? Who can stay without food or water for 40 days? Who can stay without it for four days? Five days. If you have no food for one day, you will start getting dizzy and you will faint. So here we notice that the logic is like an is an immature logic. It's like somebody he's a teenage trying to tell us why he like or a, a girl she is teenage, why she like to wear a skirt showing her panty. Her logic is she have a nice bum. Where is the logic? Now, if we take this verse seriously, which I cannot really take it seriously, but if we take this verse seriously and say that Allah here is being smart and saying, well, they are they eat earthy food. There's earthy food and having food. Okay, I will go with you with earthy food, but isn't it the Quran says that Allah He sent heavenly food? So if they eat heavenly food, is that will make it a, a, a better? If you eat food, you cannot be God. But if you create from the mud a bird, that will not make you God too. 
And if you make the blind see, that will not make you God. And if you walk in the water, that will not make you God. And if you control the nature, that will not make you God. And if you forgive sin, that will not make you God. And if you heal all kinds of diseases, that will not make you God. And if you resurrect the dead from the death, from the grave, that will not make you God. So the problem, all Jesus, those things he did, which nobody can do, save God. The problem now, Jesus, he ate food. Why, Jesus, you ate food, huh? Why you ate food? Can't you uh, stay without eating food? But here we will take the same logic of the Muhammadan and we will apply it on their God. Correct, guys? I mean, isn't it, isn't it fair? We will use your logic. The one who have, because this is about having a need, supposedly. Need, need, you have a need. How God have a need? This is the logic, supposedly. If Jesus is God, he will not be needed needing uh, food. Okay. The Muslims in their Quran, they say, that Allah, he preserved his words in a protected tablet. Why Allah, he needed, and again, the one who's asking me, where is the verses numbers? You see what I do? Chapter 85, verse number 22. Okay? If Allah is God, why he need to preserve his books in a tablet? Anybody can tell me why? This is a tablet nobody can see save Allah. Just remember that. It's not like something will give him to Musa. No. This is a tablet with Allah he have. If we ask the Muslim, do Allah have an absolute memory? What the Muslim will say? Any Muslim have an answer? Do your God Allah have an absolute memory? Which means he will never forget. Or Allah is just a human like us and he forget. I have a diary book because simply I forget. Or maybe I want to transform information to coming generation. So I write a book and then the coming generation, they can read a book of history. Allah is writing a book for himself for what? Remember for himself. This tablet Allah he put between the eyes of an angel, his name is Israfil. And the distance between his two eyes brows is 500 years, the same distance between the heaven and the earth. And the tablet is decorated by, uh, uh, like, uh, what they call it, pearls. This is how big this tablet is. And Allah, he put all his information there. Okay, so Allah is God, and the one who have needs, he cannot be God. Is that correct, guys? This is the logic. Why Jesus, he ate food? Obviously, he have a need. This is, what, this is the logic. So he cannot be God. Okay, what is the need of Allah to have a tablet? Any Muslim knows? Who is a Muslim have an answer? Please guys inform your friends that we are here in this channel, not in the Arabian Prophet, so they will come. And don't forget to subscribe, please. Why Allah he need that? Right? Uh, Orthodox believer, he's saying, I love you. And you know, God, he says to make a, okay, to make a, a witness with Sharabim. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know what it says there. And this is this is your own interpretation. This is not about making images of, of uh, uh, Mary and uh, 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 any other one. You see, this is what the, what the problem with those people. Uh, they have their own repeated uh, belief and they are blind. To make a decoration in a temple, and the Bible says it clearly, you make no images of what is in heaven down in earth. And then you say to me, in the same book on Exodus, it says the following. That's because you are ignorant. Because if we show you the same verses you are quoting for us, people will laugh at you. 
Do you want me to show you the verses? Hold on. And here you notice that some people they claim to be Christians, but they are evil because they are trying to do to disturb our topic. Cult worshippers. Because they worship the sect more than they worship God. This is the verses you gave me in the front of, of us in the in the in the screen. Read with me carefully what it says. You see, it's very shameful, it's very stupid that those people, they claim to be Christians, but they cannot explain two sentences in the Bible. This is the same exact problem we find with, with the Muhammadan. And they try to fabricate meaning as they wish, when they wish. If you read the verses you are reading, my friend, you will see that none of what you said is exist here. Do you even know how to read it? Where is the icons? Where is the pictures and the images of a human being? Where is the images and uh, 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 or the statues of a human being or anyone? None of that. False people. I feel sorry for you, my friend. I truly feel, I feel sorry for you. The Bible is so clear you make no images for what is up in heaven or for what is down in earth. So when you give me a verse, you say to me, read it, and then we open it and we don't find what you are saying. People will laugh at you. Literally. Do you have something different? Even though I'm changing the topic? Do you have something better? Yeah, come back again and uh, search in Google and come back and says to me, yes, the Bible says so. No, the Bible does not say so. You are funny and you are dummy. Don't take what people, they say to you. If somebody want to wanna prove something, let him show you. You read the verses and you will see what he's claiming is not even there. Now we go back to our topic. Why Allah he needed a preserved tablet? Anyone? Shafiq. Yeah, this is the same kid we blocked before he's a kid. Yeah, yeah, he's a, this is a kid. You know, try to remember them. This is the same kid. You know, he's a he's a very ugly person. Uh, Orthodox believer, you fail, my friend, because you gave me a verse. It doesn't say what you said. It doesn't say what you said at all. Everybody is laughing at what you said. And you are not an Orthodox believer because Orthodox believer should not make things up. Do you know what Orthodox mean? Orthodox mean the one who did not change anything, the straight way. So how you are an Orthodox, yet you are saying to me what you said. And the verses you gave me, it doesn't say not even for a single second what you said. You speak Arabic, you can't even go and read the translation in Arabic. I feel sorry for you. Now, we go back to our topic. Any Muslim can tell us what is the need of the tablet? Yeah, I know in Orthodox you have icons, but this is not the order of God. That is your tradition.
This is your tradition. This is not of God. Can Jesus say a sentence, make an icon of me so people, they can see how I look like? I mean, it's very simple. It would take him two seconds to say that. But you are looking desperately to find anything so we can make images. You know what I mean? When you are looking, like, like when somebody have a bankruptcy, what he do? He look for pennies. Let us look for the penny. Maybe here, maybe here he meant this. Maybe there he meant there. We have a verse saying clearly, make no images. To whatever in heaven, whatever in down in the earth, even in the sea. That's it. Nothing. So look what you do, because you are a hypocrite man, following a tradition, not following God. You close your eyes blind of what God said clearly, and you try to make verses look sound like God he make you or asked you to make images. And this is what you did. Still, I believe my brother in Christ, the Orthodox Catholic who have images, they are Christians. But I believe this is wrong. Now, who is a Muslim when I answer me about Allah need a preserved tablet? Anyone? <clears throat> Aren't books in heaven, for example, the book of life? Book in heaven, book of life. You see, if you take everything in a, uh, there is two ways to take things. Either you say it's a, a spiritual, or you say it's as literal. Do you, so, do you think really God? He have a book. It's called the Book of Life, and he flip page number fifty five, and he will find your name there. Are you serious? The Book of Life. That's mean your name is written in the Book of Eternity. This is metaphorical of you living forever. Not God. He have a Book of Life. <laughs> You know, I don't know, some uh, 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 human being, he, he don't want to be mature. Jesus says, the one who drink my water, the, are you saying to me that Jesus was carrying 1,000 bottle of waters and he was giving water to people? When he said, the one who drink my water don't die? Don't be silly. Now, who is the Muslim? Wanna give me the reason that Allah He have a physical tablet, and this is by the agreement of Muhammad, by the agreement of the Muslims, and their inter interpretation, translation saying that. Well, the scholar who says that he is false because simply the Bible is a book of metaphorical, not a book of, about physical. And you know, everybody knows that when you say your name is written in a book of God, I can say that. Uh, you see, even the book of God, the one, the Bible we have, this is not physical. Just to show you how silly those people who say that to you. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why? That those are not physical? We putting it in a book does not make it a physical because God, he did not give it to us as a book. What is physical is what God, he gave to Moses as an example. He gave him a physical book. He gave him the Ten Commandments. But the reason God, he gave Moses Ten commandment in a tablet because Moses is a man. He's not God. Did God send an angel and he deliver books? He says, this is a book written by God. Read it. No. Right? Doesn't say that in the Bible pages were flipped. Uh, this is okay because they are writing in papers the one who's writing it says okay I'm, I'm writing and we're using paper <laughs> my friend you are with my respect to you you are an ignorant isn't it the Bible itself written by the hand of man so the question is we are talking about God and we are talking about a man so the man he wrote the book of John this is why it's called the book of John John he wrote the book not God. Ignorant. That's mean there's a book and there's pages and there's paper and there's ink. Here we are talking about God. He wrote a book which nobody can read except him. This is the tablet.
so the question is why Allah he have a tablet until now we are waiting and you will notice that the one who is disturbing our topic is those who call themselves a Christians not even the Muslims do you notice that because they are too much into images some people they are slaves of images So do we have an answer from any Muslim? Anyone? So based on the Quran, Allah has needs. Based on the Quran, Jesus has needs. That's mean Allah and Jesus, they have needs. Okay. Let us show you another needs in the Quran, additional to the tablet. Anyone remember something? Anyone remember something about Allah needs? My friend, this is all metaphorical. You are an ignorant. Book of life, God did not write names. God, he have a memory and his memory is absolute. So it's very ignorant of you. You know what some people they try to do? They take anything in a very illiterate way. When they want, and when they want, they don't take it in a literate way. So the book of life, even the one you are talking about, this is written by a man. Because the man is the one is telling you that your name will be written in the book of life. And that man is telling you about God saving you and your name will be, will be there. But there's no physical book. This is very naive of you. Because now you are assuming that God, he has a memory which is short and he will, he will forget your name. This is why he need to write your name. Otherwise, your name will be gone. There's billions of a human being. They die already. So you are saying to me, because there's billions, the God mind or intelligence cannot handle all those names. So what he need to do? He have to write them in a book. This is not what is meant in the Bible. This is your fantasy. When Jesus says, I am the resurrection, I am the resurrection. Is the resurrection something we can hold or it is an idea? It is something we can hold or it's a power which is God have it and God practice it and he is the resurrection. So if he if God he made you come back to life is that mean you are God now? Because he said I am the resurrection? To make it simple for you, if Jesus says, I am, and he said, I am the resurrection, and the one who is resurrected is you. So the resurrected is a physical. But when Jesus said, I am the resurrection, are he is he saying that he is you? No. But he said, I am the resurrection. So he's talking about, in a metaphorical way, I am the power of life. I am the one who create life. I am the one who will put you together. He is not saying he is you. So you can say, okay, he said, I am the resurrection and I am resurrected. So I am the one who is resurrected, which is I am Jesus. Now we continue. If we go in the Quran, we will find the Quran saying the following. And yet we are talking about needs of God. Chapter 55, verse number 56. And I created the jinn only for them to worship me. What is the purpose of a creation? The one who keeps saying to me, open your uh, uh, Skype, my Skype is open. One more time you say it, I will block you. And I created the jinn and the man only for them to worship me. So what is the purpose to create the jinn and the man? What is the purpose? To worship me. Why Allah created us and the genie to worship him? Is that a need or a fantasy? 
you see I can say now I only cooked so I can eat why I cooked so I can eat I only planned vegetables so I can eat so what is the purpose of the plant so I can eat okay Allah created the jinn and the man for what to worship Allah so Allah he created them for a reasoning and the reason is he need worshipers how we can prove that if we go in the hadith Muhammad he make it even more clear read this hadith with me and try not to laugh Muhammad said and this is Sahih Muslim this is a very Sahih hadith 2749 number by by him in whose hand is my life if you were not to commit sin Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would place replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah do you see it so why Allah he want to create you to worship him and then what to commit sin and then what you ask for forgiveness so Allah is in need he need people to ask for forgiveness he is mentally ill he's lonely if you don't commit sin Allah will destroy you so your sin is the reason for you to stay alive according to the logic of Muhammad you commit sin Allah will keep you alive as long you for us for forgiveness so asking for forgiveness is the needs of Allah to feel that he is important do you see now let us compare between this and Jesus right uh, yeah I block anyone who want to disturb our topic our topic is about Islam and you are taking me away from my topic and please admin anyone he take us away from our topic he is a donkey he is not fit in my book we have a topic and the topic about Islam and you are a donkey and you don't understand if you have an issue you don't agree with me about what I said about icons no problem go and kiss the icons from now until tomorrow just go go but sleep there I'm not a fool God God is not an icon you don't even know how those people look like you do not know how Mary look like you do not know how Jesus look like you do not know how the angels look like and yet you make an icon so you are obviously you have a problem you worship a tradition you don't worship God at least get their, their, their real images before you make an icon for them <laughs> is that correct guys at least if I want to make an icon of somebody I should get his image okay I understand you say we have a towel of Jesus face but this is not a clear image and it's not enough to make an image and even if there is an image Jesus did not say that to you so you are mentally ill to discuss even about it for with me here because you chose the wrong time the wrong place and we are speaking about we are defending Christianity and you are here to, to make it look bad this is your purpose for you are the devil you want people to believe that the Christians they are pagan and they kiss the stones and they, we, we are saying to the Muslims why you kiss a black stone and then you say to me I want to kick uh, I want to kiss images you say to Muslim you yourself you say to Muslims why you kiss a black stone and why you kiss icons so you are not free from the pagan inside you you are a pagan inside you you need images God himself came to us. He did not send a picture. And Jesus said, bless those who believe and they did not see. Is that true, guys? Did Jesus say that? Bless those who believe and they did not see. So why you need to see? Do you want to see the nails in Jesus' hands too to believe? The same as his disciple? 
Show us your hands. Very immature mentality. This is why I say it's very dangerous for us as a Christians to follow a sect. We should not follow any sect. There's nothing it's called a Protestant, nothing it's called Catholic, nothing it's called Orthodox. Those are the fruit of politics, and politics always is bad. And politics divide us. We follow the Bible, we don't follow a priest. A priest, he can make whatever he wants. He can say, oh, it says here, there. It doesn't say. The Bible says it clearly. Make no images. I mean, just to show you how a human being, he live a fantasy. When God, he says, make no images to anything in heaven. Where is God? He's in heaven. Make no images. In the likeness of anything. I mean, how clear we can make it. But those, because they are born of pagan belief before Christianity, they could not get rid of the pagan Muhammad. Muhammad, he did the same. Muhammad the pagan, he wanted to be the same as the Christian and the Jews somehow. But he could not get rid of the black stone and the Kaaba. So he kept the paganism inside him and he practiced it literally. And those who used to be pagan and then they became a Christians. So now what we have? We have God, but we don't have a status for him. We have God, but we don't have images for him. So let us make images. So what we did, we just replaced God. We have a previous God and we have a new God. The previous God was a pagan God. And now the new God is not a pagan God. Even though the God said it clearly, make no images, we will make images for him. And we will find any verse to make it look like it is. Or it meant to do so but who can deny that this is a very clear verse nobody and this is the command of the Lord and by the way just to show you the ignorant guy who was saying in, in the in the in the book of Exodus uh, chapter number 30 it says make etc like uh, uh, images of etc you know if you say that this is what it's meant according to your understanding that's mean this is a contradiction with this verse because it says make no images so those images are not for any creature who live in earth neither in heaven neither in this in the in the sea but a desperate person he always look for pennies now as you notice with me here As long as the Muslims they say that Jesus cannot be God if he have a need for food well God cannot be God the God of Islam because he needs sinners and those sinners are begging for forgiveness you see actually here this is involved mental illness and I will tell you why imagine you have a child you have a child If you don't like the idea of a child, let us say, uh, you know, you have a cat. And you are making a statement, if this cat does not come to me every day and cry under my feet, asking me for forgiveness, I will kill her. But this cat is not committing sin, did not eat your food, did not steal anyone's food. She's a perfect cat. I will kill her still because she did not commit sin and ask for forgiveness. So the whole purpose of life, according to Islam, is you commit sin, Allah is happy. If you don't commit sin and ask for forgiveness, Allah is suffering from depression. You know what I mean? Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? If you don't commit sin, Allah is suffering. Wait, okay, why does God he want me to commit sin unless if I don't commit sin he will kill me? I mean, give me a reason why he is so desperate and he is angry if I don't commit sin. I, th I thought he should be happy, right? The correct logic is that God will be happy if we are not committing sin, not in Islam. 
in Islam, you have to commit sin. It is a necessity. Otherwise, Allah will sweep you out of existence. So Allah have a very bad needs. You see, if Jesus ate food as the Quran says, and that will make him not God, well, this is will make God the devil. Not only will make him not God, will make him the devil himself. Because this is an abuse of authority. Anyone heard what abuse of authority mean? I am I have authority, and I will be unjust. This is unjust. You see, you know what unjust mean? Unjust mean. You do things which is not and have nothing to do with justice. So why the one who do not commit sin, he will be killed? Give me a reason. Where is the just? Don't the Muslims, they say that one of the names of Allah is Al-Adil, which means just? Is that just? How you call, call him? So I don't commit sin, he will destroy me? What is that? Not only dictator, this is filthy, this is sick. This God is confusing me. What, what I should do? Commit sin or don't commit sin? <laughs> you see, and Muhammad, to make it more clear, he said in different hadith. <clears throat> because Muhammad is the God, not Allah. There's no things called Allah. Read carefully. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. I came to the Prophet while he was wearing a white cloth and, and sleeping. Then I went back to him again after he got up from his sleep. He said, Nobody says, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And then later, on his, in, uh, in, uh, he dies, while believing in that, except that he will enter paradise. So Muhammad saying, the one who says there is no God but Allah, and he die, he will go to heaven. Okay. The man, he said, even if he had committed illegal sexual intercourse and theft, he said, even if he had committed illegal sexual intercourse and theft, I said, and this is a three time as usual, even if he committed illegal sexual course and his theft, he said yes. Even if it's three times, it have to be three times, as you see. Trinity. Okay. So, if you commit sin and say shahada, Allah will not destroy you. If you don't commit sin and say shahada, Allah will destroy you. Because you are not asking for forgiveness. And here, look at the contradiction of Muhammad's statement. If you say shahada, you are going to heaven. But where is the forgiveness? And where is asking for forgiveness? Going back to the previous hadith, it says that if you don't commit sin, Allah will sweep you out of the existence. So if we compare between them, Allah have no problem. You commit adultery as much as you wish. However, this is a total contradiction for different statements said by Muhammad as usual. Muhammad is a person of a chain of contradiction. This is his business. This is what he do for a living. He contradict himself every two seconds. If we go to the front hadith, we will find the following. All right. Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which it is uh, uh, which he if necessity must commit. What does that mean? Allah, he needs sinners. Because why Allah, he wrote for you? 
to commit adultery why he wants you to commit adultery give me a reason who is a Muslim can tell me as you see which is a necessity must commit <laughs> must commit so if you commit adultery this is why Muhammad he says even if you commit adultery you go to heaven okay so if I commit adultery I will go to heaven because at the end of the day Allah he like me to have boom boom illegally it's the joy of Allah it was Allah order not my choice as you see it says it's a must necessity to commit do you see it so according to Islam if you commit adultery it's not you who committed adultery it's Allah Allah is the one who committed adultery and here we notice something very funny about this anyone notice what is the mistake Muhammad is saying this guy he is a, he's a, he's a madman how you are saying to me that Allah he wrote for us exactly even how much we are going to commit and we must commit and yet you say to us that if you not to commit sin Allah will sweep you out of existence that means such a people they don't exist correct is Muhammad here speaking about the free will it sounds like it but if we connect this to the other one you will see there's no free will however all of them they lead us to one thing Allah have many needs one of them he liked to be worshipped number two he liked to see people begging for him please forgive me he enjoy it he feels so good he feel as God he's, he feel God you see if you don't beg Allah for forgiveness he's not God he don't feel like a God he want to prove to himself that he's God he go in the mirror oh I don't look like a God but then he go outside he find millions of people bowing down to him and say forgive me Allah no, you see I'm gone you see Muslims I'm using your logic so Jesus is not God just because he ate a food and Allah is God after all of this Allah have a tablet mean have he have a short memory Allah needs sinners Allah need worshipers Allah will kill you if you don't commit sin Allah need people to ask for forgiveness this is all his needs so it is necessity to commit sin so because it is necessity for Allah to live And to be exist maybe maybe Allah he feed in your sin prove me wrong otherwise why Allah is so angry to the point if you don't commit sin he will destroy you right no we don't want anyone to pretend Muslims we don't do that if you say that one more time in the text I will ban you too because that will give us a bad image people will think we are getting we, we make people call us and they act like they are Muslims don't do that don't be, don't be silly guys please speak as mature think before you say something what we do here is very serious have to do involved with saving the, the life of a human being so don't talk like kids please can I cool pretend to be a Muslim what does that mean can't we be adult Do you think really I'm here to, to hear the, to see this text? Are you supposed to try to be funny? Muslims they do that. Muslims they get somebody pretend to be something. We don't. Now, do we have any Muslim want to say anything? anyone so as you see Allah have many needs what else what what is more of Allah needs anyone remember there's tons of needs Allah he has
Who is a Muslim would like to call us? Real Muslim. Shia, they will argue it doesn't exist. My friend, I don't talk about the Shia because they are not the majority of Muslims. Otherwise, the Shia, they have more horrible stories than this. The Shia, they believe that Ali can forgive your sin. Fatima can forgive your sin. Hussein can forgive your sin. I mean, those people, they worship a human being as God. Even the Shia, they don't believe that Muhammad and Ali and Fatima and Hassan and Hussein, etc., they are human. They believe they are light. And why? Just because there's a verse in the Quran says that Muhammad, he is a Siraj. What Siraj mean? Chapter 33, verse number 46. And Allah, he made Muhammad as a lamp, as a light for mankind. So the Shia now, they take this verse and they say, this is about Ahlul Bayt, the family of the Prophet. All of them, they are made of light and they are not a human. Yes, we see them like they are a human, but the fact they are not. So I don't talk about the Shia because Shia is obviously totally different religion from the Muslim Sunni. They are two different religions. They are not sect, as some people believe. They are not they have nothing to do with each other but the Shia is more more stupid to the point destroying the Shia cult will take you maybe if if, if Sunni take me 30 seconds the Shia will take me one two three and I'm done because I just did here we go the Shia sect is destroyed this is what they believe they believe that Muhammad and his family are not a human they used to be a stars in the forehead of Allah and the funny, the Shia, they say that a Muslim, they believe that Allah is a physical being. But aren't you the one who says they are a star in the forehead of Allah? What is the forehead of Allah? Is that a metaphorical? Aren't you the one who said they are stars in his forehead? Like a headlight? Do we have any Muslim want to say something? So look what we got here. Allah, he failed horribly to explain to us why Jesus cannot be God. The excuse he is, he eat food. There are two versions of Islam which contradict each other. No, my friend, there's no two version of Islam. There's billions of versions. You see, most of the people, they have wrong understanding what we are talking about. When we say Islam, there's many Islam. Even the Muslim Sunni, they have thousands and thousands of sects. Not you see the major there's four major schools, but the Islamic sect is endless However a sect cannot be a problem if they share let us say the major concept, but they don't They don't Remember Quran uh, Make it clear that a Muslim he have to obey the Prophet in order to be a Muslim He have to obey the Prophet in order to be a Muslim. So if a Muslim, he don't obey the Prophet, then he is not a Muslim, as simple as that. All right. All those verses saying the same. You have to obey, you have to obey, you have to obey. And even some verses saying that the one who obey the Messenger of Allah, as in chapter 4, verse number 80, chapter 4, verse number 80, the one who obey the messenger, he obey Allah. And that means, in order to obey the messengers, we have to be, or Muhammad, we have to have the statement of Muhammad, correct? Do you understand me? So in order to, to obey Muhammad, we have to know what Muhammad said. Because now it's not only what Allah said, it's what Muhammad said. Okay, which books is the books Muslims agree upon to be the Muhammad statement? None. They don't agree about any, any books because the Sunni themselves they don't agree with books. They have tons of books. Even the one they call it Sahih. You debate any guy, he says to you, I don't accept this. I don't accept that. I don't ag uh, agree with Sahih Bukhari. He's a Sunni. I don't agree with Sahih Bukhari. I don't agree with Sahih Muslim. So we, we, how do we, how we will obey the Prophet? Islam is a very lousy religion like a jelly. You know jellyfish? 
Have you ever made a jelly dish? That is Islam. It doesn't have a structure. It's stupid. It's silly. It is jelly. So everybody says, I don't follow this. I don't follow that. I don't accept this. I don't accept that. You will not find one Christian says, I don't accept the book of John. You will not find one Christian says, I don't accept the book of Mark, the book of Luke, the book of Matthew. And this is what Jesus said, and that's it. You will not find a Christian saying, I don't accept the book of Revelation, the book of Act. So we have sect. And they might say, somebody might say to you, well, in the, like in some, some Christian uh, uh, sect, they have more books in the Bible and, than others. But those books will not change anything about the fact of our belief. So if we if we consider them or not, still they change nothing about Jesus being God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So adding a book or taking a book off, just to make it simple, let us say we lost the Old Testament is gone. You know, somebody, he's a king, he came, he burned all the books, and he controlled the world. He burned all the Old Testament. Still, we are Christians, and nothing will affect us. Why? Because we have the books which we agree upon, which is the books about God, which is the Messiah. The Old Testament is just to prepare us to know how the story of the Messiah came to exist. Let us say it is a book of history and book of God in the same time is speaking about man and God how they came together So we as a Christians We have four witnesses for one story At the end of the day, it's one story one God Four witnesses In Islam they have no witnesses even the book we are reading, this is not the book of Muhammad. No Muslim can show me where is the book of Muhammad. Not a single book written in the time of Muhammad or even during the time of his companions. As Muslim, they say, they say to you, this is the book of Uthman, but we cannot find the book of Uthman. If you open the book in Arabic, you will see it says that this is according to the recitation of Anri Wayati Hafs, Ibn Asim, Ibn 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 according to the recitation of so they don't have a book where is the book of Asim? Asim, who came to exist 200 years after muhammad they have no book where is the book so where is the quran where do you get this they say to your recitation you want to come you want to convince that convince me that you muslims you recite the quran by heart you say yes now we can do it my friend at that time Muslims the real Muslims who recite the Quran are dead Because simply even let us say assume for the sake of argument Somebody he was able to memorize all the Quran which even the Muslims agree that is not true The Muslims agree that the Sahaba each one of them he have some of the Quran Not all the Quran But those are people who died and there's no written book in their hands so how 200 to 300 years after you will say to me that the Quran can be recited by one person actually Muhammad himself he forget the Quran Muhammad himself let us see the hadith Uh, let us see the hadith where it says <clears throat> hmm. here we go
Allah Apostle heard a man reciting the Quran at night. He said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him as he has reminded me of such and such verses and such and such surahs which I caused to forget. Anyone knows how serious this is allegation here? This is very serious. Anyone notice with me the word caused? Did you notice the word caused? Muslims, Muhammad was caused to forget the Quran by who? Any Muslim can tell us? Any Muslim knows who caused him to forget the Quran? I want a Muslim who can tell us who is the one causing him to forget the Quran. I'm waiting for a Muslim to give us an answer. Don't tell me all of you Muslim do not know. Are you searching Google? I want a Muslim, I don't want a Christian to tell me. I want a Muslim to tell me who is the one caused Muhammad to forget the Quran. Because he's saying clearly, I caused, I was caused to forget. Which means he forgot it totally. Any Muslim? Why we are short of Muslims? Here there is one of two sides, either shaitan he caused him to forget it or Allah. And guess what? According to Muslims, Allah is the one who forget, make Muhammad forget the Quran. Are you serious? Yes. Okay. So how you say to me that the Quran is preserved? Because look what happened. Allah caused Muhammad to forget the Quran. The question should be why? Shouldn't we ask why? Especially, Allah did not cause all the Muslims forget the Quran. He caused only Muhammad. As you see, the guy is reciting the Quran. And Muhammad, he forgot verses. Not only verses, he forgot chapters, the whole chapters. So how Allah caused the one who brought the Quran forget the Quran? This is embarrassing. And the one who heard the Quran, he remembered the Quran. This is embarrassing. Because if I go to Muhammad and I say to him, say to us what you said yesterday, and he say, I forgot, that will make me believe he's not a prophet. Right? Any Muslim can explain to me why Allah he caused Muhammad to forget, but the other guy, Muslim, he did not? Did Allah maybe forget to make the other guy forget too? <laughs> and remember, this is, this is, can be shown too in the Quran. The Quran have a very fancy fantasy. Like Allah, he is the one who caused us to forget the Quran. And why? Because Allah will make something better or similar. Have you ever heard of a madness like this? And as long as we are talking about the needs of Allah, this is additional need. Put it to your notes. The need to forget Quran. This is a need. How we can prove that this is a need? Read with me carefully. Chapter 2, verse 106. When we abrogate verses or cause it to be forgotten, 
Who is the one who caused verses to be forgotten? The Quran is so clear, Allah, not Shaitan. But if you think about it, the one who should cause you to forget the word of God is Shaitan. Who is the one who caused the Christians to forget the Bible based on this? Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point? The Muslim they say actually the Quran if you go to chapter 5 verse 14 Allah he said he will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians <clears throat> And we made covenant with those who proclaimed are Christians this is a translation not me they then forgot a large portion of the advices given to them what does that mean the Bible right okay Allah will not punish us because we forgot but he was the one who make us forget <laughs> do you see how stupid this book is so Allah is the one who caused Muslims to forget and he caused the Christian to forget their books. So why Allah is not punishing the, the Muslims for forgetting their books, but he is punishing us for causing us to forget our book? Are we following? Not only that, the drama is not over. Going back to the verse, when Allah, he says, supposedly, that we abrogate verses or cause it to be forgotten forgotten we will bring one better like what Allah he will make better Quran I thought the Quran is the most miraculous so this verse admitting that there is Quran which is horrible and it can be better so Allah can write word better than the word of Allah <laughs> <laughs> Do you see it? Any Muslim? This is a reason? No, this is not really the reason. There's a there's a reason behind this. Muhammad, if you go to the interpretation made by the Muslims, it says that the Arab they were making fun of Muhammad. They were saying that this man Muhammad claimed to be prophet yet he enjoy an order for his followers in the morning and he changes uh, at night and he changed his mind by the morning is that right yes if there is any Muslim would like to call us and challenge me to show you right? I will show you you can open any interpretation in your book you want this is what it says Muhammad he says something in the morning and the second day or even sometime in the same day he changed his mind and what it does mean change his mind <clears throat> excuse me Allah changed his mind Allah he changed his mind I'm trying to open the Muslim website to show you the interpretation. So you can see this is not our own. The, the website of the Kingdom of Jordan, as usual, is not working. Eh, finally, it's opening. Thank God. All right, chapter 2, verse 106. All right. Read carefully. This is the Sira Jalalain. When the disbeliever began to uh, uh, dear, dear the matter of abrogation, saying <laughs> that one day Muhammad enjoins 
his companion to one thing and then the next day he forbid it <laughs> How this is can be from God So God he made a law yesterday let us say God he says to Moses Don't work in Saturday Second day God he says work in Saturday don't work in Sunday third God God said don't work in Saturday Sunday work in Monday what is that do you see it and you will notice here he add the word nun siha which means we cause it to be forgotten okay why Allah not only abrogating the verses but he is quote he's saying cause it to be forgotten because simply Muhammad trying to give an excuse why he's forgetting Quran he cannot repeat the Quran twice correctly right hmm Uh, somebody saying to us just to show you how smart a Muslim is here. He says, uh, obviously this guy is not mature. He is an, uh, he's a teenage. He says, if Jesus is 100% God and he is 100% human, questions, Jesus God and the human wet dreams or not? <laughs> this is what the Muslims, when he, he think deeply, he think about his penis. My friend, I will go with you. So when the angel Jibreel, he came to Mary, according to Islam, as a perfect man, did he see what a dream, my brother? Huh? Brother? Chapter 19, verse number 17. It says that the Holy Spirit, which is according to Muslims, which is very funny, to say so that it is Jibreel okay Jibreel he came as a perfect man and yet he is a perfect angel did he have a wet dream Abdul are you there look at me don't look at your private part focus up what a dream I mean look at this guy what he's thinking Jesus is the perfect man and he's the perfect God so did he have a witty dream, brother? A brother If he did the prophet God and he is the perfect man, then that means he have a private what the dream. Are you thinking about that for the last century? No, this is not him. This he copy paste what they told him from other smart Muslim. And as long as you are saying that, that means the Quran is a lie because the Quran says that the Messiah is holy the messiah what he is holy isn't it in chapter 19 verse number 19 it says the messiah is holy abdul yes it says that so what we will do now what is the witty dream you are talking about is it this is your quran saying the messiah is holy so this is holy witty dream or what This topic is really big but today we just showed you how funny the cult. the cult does not have any logic if we apply the same logic the cult use on this cult this cult will collapse in two seconds right does not exhaust at the same time because he does not commit any sin i'm not sure what you mean now one more final thing about uh, allah causing uh, muhammad to forget quran this is why muhammad he came with an idea that allah he gave him the quran in seven letters because each time he tried to recite the quran he says something different and the muslim became confused so once there is two Muslims, they were fighting over it. 
They were fighting over this. One of them, he recited the Quran in a way. The other one, he did not recite it in the same way, which means different words. So when they came to the Prophet, and they said to him, well, this guy, uh, he recited in different way, not the way I heard you saying. So Muhammad, he come with the, he, he got busted. So he said, oh, Allah, he gave me the Quran in seven letters. And if you read the story, you will see how funny it is. Allah, he gave Muhammad the Quran in one letter, which means one way to say it, which means different words. And then uh, Muhammad, he says to Allah, but my people cannot do that. So Allah gave him two letters, which means two Quran. Muhammad, he insists, he says, my, my people are not capable of doing that. The angel, he go back to Allah, and you see, this is the story in front of you. This is a very sahih, very accurate, supposedly, according to Muslims' reference. So the angel, he keep going up, down, up, and up, down. And each time, Allah, he sent him a new Quran saying, well, I, uh, my people cannot do that. And then at the end, Muhammad, he made Allah give him seven Quran. So seven Quran to make a tribe of Quraysh understand the Quran. To make a group of Arab, a smaller group of Arab understand the Quran. So if, if the Arab cannot understand the Quran in seven Arabic, how the Arab, how a Pakistani can understand the Quran in a language which is not his language? You know what I'm saying? And why Allah did not give Musa seven Torah and Isa seven Injil? Yeah, and uh, one of you, Kevin, he is thinking, that's good. Kevin is saying, well, isn't it Allah? Isn't it the distance to heaven is 2,000 years? Anyone remember where, where, where uh, uh, our brother Kevin, he got this from? Thank you, Kevin, for mentioning this. This is a good question. How uh, how uh, Jibreel, he went up and he broke the second uh, Quran. Remember the Quran says that the angels, it took them a 1,000 year to go up to heaven. 1,000 year. Okay. So to go up is 1,000. To go down is another 1,000, right? So how do you believe he came to Muhammad today? And then his second day he come to him. But the Quran says that it take the angels 1,000 years to go up to heaven. That's mean they need 2,000 years in order to go around the trip. Right? Any Muslim? So, you know, it's, it's obvious that the Quran is crazy, full of contradictions, story doesn't make sense. And God, he gave Muhammad seven Quran, what for? Those are Arab. If the, if the Arab cannot understand the Quran unless it's in seven dialect, how a person from Bangladesh he can understand the Quran in a translation? Uh, remember, it is seven dialect sent by Allah, not by translator. Huh? Look at this hadith here. I, I you know, let me give it to you. Uh, so you guys can save it. Look at this uh, hadith. One Muslim, he heard another Muslim saying, uh, Quran, I had no confusion in my mind from that time I embraced Islam except when I recited the verse and another man recited differently. Huh? So this guy he became a Muslim and he heard the other guy reciting the same verse differently the same one I said messenger of Allah taught me 
and the other woman said messenger of Allah taught me too <laughs> Then, so I went to the Prophet and said, O Prophet of Allah, didn't you teach me such and such a verse? He said, yes. The other man said, didn't you teach me such and such verse? The Prophet said, yes. Which means they recited the verse for him, both of them. Then he said, Jibreel and Mikael, peace be upon them, came to me, and Jibreel sat on the right, uh, uh, on my right, and Mikael in my left. Jibreel, peace be upon him, said, "Recite the Quran with which, uh, with one way of recitation." Mikael, he said, "Teach him more." <laughs> Guys, there is two angels in the left side of Muhammad and the right side of Muhammad. One he says one way, the other one says, "Give him more." No, give him more. I give him more. So each time Muhammad recites the Quran, the angel next to him he says to him to the other one, "Give it differently." What is this? How many of you did save this verse, this hadith? Because later you might need it, and this is Sahih, by the way. Muslim cannot say it's weak. All right, this is stupid, but because Muhammad is trying to cover his lies, why he cannot recite the same statement of God twice correctly? Because simply he's a fabricator, he's a thief, he's a liar. Imagine the uh, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Then the angel, he told me, uh, okay, tell them that you are uh, like, uh, you are the Alpha and uh, you are the Omega, but they'll tell them in different way. You know, like don't say it Alpha and Omega. Uh, say something different. I mean, what this is, what this is about? Especially it's the same verse, the same book. So based on this now, we should have seven Quran. Where are they? Isn't it the most time they say they are preserved? Why you are showing us one Quran? Where is the other Qurans? I want to read them. Any Muslim? Who in the world wouldn't believe that Jibreel and Mikael, one sitting in the right, one sitting in the left, and each one of them says to him, Oh, make it this way. And the other one said, It sounds like Jibreel and Jib and based on this story, this is total contradiction for the other story. Because the other story, Muhammad asked Allah. To give him more Quran, and then the angel he go back to Allah, and Allah he give him permission. Here it's, the, it's just between Jibreel and Mikael. Who believe in this? Any Muslim? All right, guys. Don't forget, please, to subscribe to this uh, channel because we are not doing live broadcast in the Arabian Prophet. It does not mean that we will not do broadcast in the Arabian Prophet. No, we will do. But we are giving the break, you know, and we want to grow up, the, uh, grow this channel because it have only a few thousands only of subscribers. So, you know, like we have many backup channels and we use them. So please subscribe and uh, uh, tell your friends that for now, until further date, we don't know when, uh, we will use this channel so don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you will know when we go live on air all right this topic is very big we can continue until the coming 10 years uh, but I think for today is more than enough the information we share obviously Islam cannot stand its own system examination you see the Muslim they try to examine if Jesus is God by a logic 
if we take the same logic we put it in Islam we will find Islam collapse in a second and this is exactly what we did today All right he cannot when a Muslim he says to us that the Bible is corrupted he is just yesterday we explained Allah is the one who sent the Bible so a Muslim saying Allah book is corrupted but the Muslim says to us that Allah he protect his book but in the same time he's saying that the Bible of Allah is corrupted so Islam cannot stand its own logic either Allah he protect his books the Muslim they say no 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 he protect only the Quran but this is mean that Allah is selective in what he to protect And we showed you in the Quran that it's not true because the Quran says it clearly that Allah nobody can change the word of Allah. Then the Muslim he say they say, Oh, he meant the Quran. Where it says that? Where it says that this is the Quran. This is your own interpretation. All those verses saying no one can change the word of Allah. So if you are saying to me that the word of Allah is the Bible, is the Injil, is the Torah, is the Psalm, is the book of David, the book of uh, 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 Solomon, the book of Abraham, the book of Moses, the book of even the, even Adam have a book. And the Quran saying nobody can change the word of Allah. Well, that's mean nobody can change the word of Allah. So. Muslims they have selective understanding even for their own book while the verses is so clear not nobody can change the word of Allah yet the Muslim they say no you can change the word of Allah you see the, the hypocrisy they go even against the Quran just to serve a propaganda Look at the verses. All of them, they are saying the same. Nobody can change the word of Allah. No one. It doesn't say the Quran. It says the words of Allah. Any words of Allah. And then we find that Allah is the one who changed the word of Allah. <laughs> Where he said that Allah, he caused the Quran to be forgotten and he sent something better. That's mean he changed it, correct? When the Quran we say we send something better, that's mean the Quran saying we change it. When the Quran says we cause you to forget him, that's mean we cause you to forget it as simple as that. So how you lie to me and say you remember the, the chapters in the Quran? Allah saying he cause you to forget. The, Muhammad, he says to us, he forget the Quran. This is a chapter 2, verse 106. And by the way, here there's something more funny. When Allah, he says that he caused it to be forgotten, so he will bring something better. Or like it I mean do you see how silly is that to say like it so why you cause me to forget something is if you want to give me the same when you say like it, it's me the same actually in Arabic it doesn't say like it it says mithluha exactly the same have you ever heard of a stupid statement like this so let us say you you know you you have a daughter and she have a Barbie huh? and then you take this Barbie and you cut it pieces and you say to your daughter I'm going to give you exactly the same so will you cut it pieces why you cut it pieces are you stupid or what it says mithluha exactly the same so if you are going to be exactly the same why you why you made me forget it what the point you put that the day is getting a point exactly why Allah caused us to forget the Quran? First of all, Christian Prince, he have his own of it, and he is very stupid. And I'm going to explain to you. Christian Prince, he think 
That when Allah called us to forget the Quran, it means we forget the Quran. The fact is, we did not forget the Quran. That we know that what Allah is speaking about, that we will forget to take our Quran with us. What? What? To take our Quran with us? Uh, Zakarnaik, it says, any verse, any of our revelation, we cause to be abrogated or to be forgotten. So it says forgotten. Exactly. Allah saying that he is going to call us to forget the Quran, but Allah later will give us Quran which is similar. So why Allah will cause me to forget the Quran if you want to give me something the same? Furthermore, Allah he do as he with. As an example, do you ask your mom why you cooked for me eggplant today? You don't ask her. Your mom she do as she with when she's cooking, and Allah is doing his cooking. Ah, so this is the cooking of Allah. So Allah he he make a food and then he throw it in the garbage and he tell us don't worry I'm going to make the same food after five minutes. And then he make a new food and then he throw it in the garbage and then he says to us, I'm going to throw the same food in the garbage. Don't worry, I will make the same. So what's the point? Exactly. Allah have a point which nobody can understand because this is why we call him Allah. For he is in serious. Do you see the logic? And yet they say to you, it's a foolishness of you to believe that Jesus is God. Well, Jesus, he don't change his mind. Jesus, he don't fabricate. Jesus, he don't say to you, I will cause you to forget. Jesus says that the earth and the heaven, they will go and my words will not. Everything will perish except my words. So I hope today we cover many good points for those who they are trying to learn. And as you see, Islam cannot stand its own standard. And any religion cannot take its own standard. It's mean it's a hypocrite cult. Because if you come to me with a logic and the logic work against your belief, that's mean you are a silly person and you do not know what are you talking about. Thank you for being with us today. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends about this new channel we are using so they can come here. And until then, I say Christ is Lord, Islam is false. And God bless you. Have a great weekend.